this time, I have the honor of welcoming our second Distinguished Young Alumni Award recipient to the stage, Bryce Hushka. Bryce is a native of Ottawa, Kansas, and currently resides in Los Angeles, California, and he is the area manager for Exxon Mobil Corporation. While at K-State, he was an active member of Lambda Chi Alpha Fraternity, Student Governing Association, the Student Alumni Board, and served as the All University Open House Chair. He graduated from K-State in 2007 with concurrent bachelor's and master's degrees in industrial engineering. Please join me in welcoming Bryce Hushka. Does this mic work? Okay, I think we're good. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to clear something up on the uh, program here. It says that my title is area manager, but it's actually lubricants area manager, okay? <laughs> I've done a lot of things over 10 years with lubricants in my career, and this is the first time I've seen lubes and distinguished in the same sentence. <laughs> It's funny, I, I don't think that my path here was quite as graceful as Megan's. We were talking, um, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of the behind the scenes look. Uh, so about six years ago, so I think when this program started, Dr. Kramer, who's up here, reached out to me and said, I want to nominate you for this award. And I said, what an honor, but we have a marketing problem, Dr. Kramer. My title starts with lubes. <laughs> So he said, hmm, good point. Why don't you actually just nominate yourself? Sound distinguished. Thanks, coach. <laughs> so we continue this dance for four years, and I would nominate myself. I took a year off in year five and did something really novel. I actually nominated someone else for the award. And uh, finally, Dr. Kramer came back to me last year, and he, he's here this year, and he said, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to actually nominate you this time, and, and do you mind if I just take off lubes? And that's how we ended up with this program, and I'm here. I, I was telling my wife, it feels a little bit weird, but I think this must be how uh, President Trump felt after uh, inauguration, or, or after he was elected, is he had to say something distinguished. So you think I would have thought about that after all these years of trying? Um, so we had this gesture in student government when I was here where if someone else had something really powerful to say, that you would yield the floor to that person and, and that idea. So I'm actually just gonna briefly talk about myself, and then I'm gonna yield the floor to an idea that's growing here at K-State, and one that a number of students that are in this room are a part of. And it's an imaginary engineering story. So quickly on my background, so my mom was from Kansas City, dad from Garden City. They met at K-State and they had five boys all within eight years. We look alike, acted alike, dressed alike, had the same hairdo. My wife recently changed mine to a comb over instead of a flip. So, um, but yeah, we, we, we were very similar. We all went to K-State and followed our parents. I was number two in the family and, and uh, studied industrial engineering. And then uh, the other part of our family, as you can see, coming to K-State, this is our uh, sixth brother in the family is, is Kansas State. So it's a big part of everything we do. I took a job with ExxonMobil. You can see I've got, as any good lubricant sales manager, I have my product placement and for the video. Um, but. Yeah, I, I took a job at ExxonMobil and I since I lived in Boston and then I moved to Washington DC where I met my wife Lauren. And then I went to San Francisco and now we're in Los Angeles where, uh, where we live together. And when I was at school, they had uh, the other engineers, oh, I missed some pictures, by the way. Product placement, I mentioned, so at our wedding, my wife's wearing a Mobile One jacket. Don't ask about what I'm wearing. Uh, <laughs> and I work for ExxonMobil. Um, but in, in college, uh, the other engineers would kind of joke and call industrial engineers imaginary engineers, and it bothered me. Um, but when I think to my professional career over 10 years, it is best described as probably being an imaginary engineer. And the way I look at that is it's applying engineering in ways that no one else could have imagined. And the skill accelerator story that I want to yield the floor to is exactly one of those examples. And the concept is really, really simple. It's that we can reimagine the student experience 
as a career startup experience and we can change everything. And when you think about that experience in that way, the student IPOs when they leave K-State. That's the defining moment, the point of truth, and everything else you solve backwards from that. Their skills are really their valuation, not their GPA, not just their GPA, it's these skills that employers care about. And the entire community becomes a startup accelerator, joining that student to help them build towards that IPO. And that story that we are building for the Skill Accelerator, whether you chose to be here, you had to be here, now you're part of the story. And you may be an extra, but I, I am fully confident that a few people here, having heard this idea for the first time, will become main characters in this story. To understand what's at stake with the story, uh, I'll give you an example that really, really hit me. I got a Facebook message from just an acquaintance and his nephew was having trouble getting a job. And he had over a 3.9 GPA, but his resume stopped there at the GPA. There was no difference factor for that student. I could help him reword his resume, but I couldn't help him actually rewrite and redo the last four years. And you've probably had stories like that that you've seen yourself where people have struggled. We spend approximately 7,000 hours getting our degree, tens of thousands of dollars, approaching hundreds of thousands of dollars. And what happens is two thirds of people make it into the workforce and they are disengaged in the careers that they choose. Something's wrong with that. And tuition continues to go up. This isn't a K-State problem, though. I think everyone here realizes it's not a K-State problem. But there is a K-State solution. And the piece that's unexpected is the hero in the Skill Accelerator story, because it is unequivocally students. There's 12 students, the founders of this Skill Accelerator program, we call them the student founders, that stepped up to help build the first draft. And there's another 72 that raised their hands and said, I want to throw away the student experience in favor of a career startup experience. And they have this idea in motion. We'll tell you about that. And it really is, it's, it is faster than a speeding bullet and it's more powerful than a locomotive. The way, like, to, to really understand the, the story and how it's had this rapid ascent, you have to understand a little bit about startup accelerators, because I've learned a lot about startup accelerators along the way. And the way a startup accelerator works is, is new businesses are really vulnerable in their early stages. And so the most promising ones are invited to be in a cohort where they're given structured guidance and networking for people that have done it before them with the sole purpose of getting them to have a better start, a better IPO. We modeled the program after the most, <laughs> one of the most promising, it's called Y Combinator. And uh, we, in addition to modeling it after Y Combinator, we set it up to where students at the, um, w where they come in and they're actually gonna have this guided support. And we had 84 students, I mentioned the raise their hand, but there are also 30 alumni coaches that raise their hands to be a part of this. And I want you to get an idea of how it works today because this is in motion. So the students will have an activity, it's self-guided. They, the, they make the choice of how much time they're gonna invest in it. It gets posted once a week. The students go and put the, out, the output online into Canvas. The alumni come and, and see that output and they respond and give their advice. They can do, their, do it from their couch. They can do it waiting for an airplane to give that advice to the student. The part that's great is that that conversation is open. So mentoring is not bilateral anymore, it's multilateral. You can learn from every conversation with every other student. There's four live events for the program and at those uh, live events, the students are really building four main things in their startup, four pillars. The first is their vision for their career, their career idea. The second is that they're designing their product, which is a combination of skills that they're gonna bring to market to bear that vision. The third is an execution plan to acquire the skills. And then the fourth 
is that they're going to build a team that's going to support them along the way. And we have students participating anywhere from freshmen to graduating seniors to PhDs. So it's for, for all students. And at the kickoff, I'm going to read a few things that the students said. We, we asked them to say, what could a startup experience look like different than a student experience? And they painted this contrasting picture that, that I found so powerful. As a student, you visit potential colleges with your parents and you're ushered around to the best buildings with the best faculty with the best programs. It's all about the university. As a startup, you're handed keys when you go on campus and you're told that all these buildings, the 3,000 faculty and administration, the tens and thousands of alumni care about one thing and that's your IPO. It becomes all about the students. And it's not just an IPO, it's one that's with more purpose towards where you want to go. As a student, you're solving to be hundreds of a GPA score better than everyone else at the exact same things. As startups, you are in search of your difference factor. It's a unique combination of your identity, your skills, and your interests. And you understand that it's better to be at the top it's, it's better if you have a combination of skills that no one else has, and you're only at the top 80% of those skills, because if your com combination is different, that's enough. It's not about just being a little bit better at all the same things. As a student, this one hits me, but as a student, you go and you stand in line at career fairs with the resume that you finished the night before. As startups, your resume writes itself. Literally, we want the resume to write itself. That's the dream. You don't stand in lines. Companies stand in line to come talk to you because you're showcasing your startup. This is your difference factor and they want to come talk to you. As a student, your tuition increases every year and your initial scholarships fade away. I think Many of you can probably relate to that. As a startup, your learning experience has more purpose and it's aimed at the university's mission. Student experience and research. You receive seed funding, another startup term, for your contribution. Your financial situation gets better over time, not worse. That's kind of crazy, right? You, you get more skills, your, your uh, financial situation gets better. And as a student, this is the final one, you graduate, receive your diploma, and are told good luck. As a startup, you leave with a board of directors filled with people that have paved the same path or similar paths before you. And you're compelled, because this program was so helpful to you, to be on the board of directors for other early startups that are just getting started at K-State. There's already an impact that's happening to students today from this program, just from putting it on this semester. And I want to read uh, a statement from a student that's actually here today, Husto, that he sent to my brother who's been helping out with the program. Thanks for investing your time in the program. Let, let me tell you that the activities are awesome. I reflected on all the questions and even shared them with my non-IE friends, and they loved it. Some of my friends even mentioned that they wish they had something like this when they were in college. Just with these two activities, I can see how this program is making a difference in my college career and helping me have a better mindset in regards to my educational development. It is giving me direction and I'm really grateful for that. It's powerful and that's just one example. As an imaginary engineer, you understand that the most powerful stories have ripple effects that eventually turn into tidal waves. By changing students, we can change K-State. Imagine the transaction today as students. You have faculty and administration, 3,000 of them, sitting on one side of the negotiating table as sellers. And you have our 20,000 students on the other side of the ta table as buyers of a degree. Imagine that same transaction with startups. You have 23,000 people on the same side of the table. Students shift from being buyer, buyers to being shareholders in the mission of the university. And now you take all of this learning energy and you aim it in the same direction at our mission of better research and better students. 
it's amazing. And at the, uh, the capstone of this program that we're running this semester, the students are actually coming up with what we call skill-rich opportunities, which are, are big opportunities. They show up as the header on your resume that are focused on the university's mission, but also build their skills. And it's amazing to hear some of the ideas, and I recommend that you stay tuned to those. As an imaginary engineer, uh, which, which I am now, you, you don't stop at the first ripple though, because by changing K-State, you can change higher education and you can change people's life after college. And this program and those 12 student founders have really opened my eyes to my startup story. And I wanted to share what, what I shared with them at the kickoff. This was a younger, more polished version of me. <laughs> My wife put this together, by the way. Thank you. Um, so I started by throwing a dart at a board and selected my major. Probably many of you did that. I selected industrial engineering because it dealt with people. My first calculus test was a D, so you could still be distinguished. <laughs> I didn't understand some of my classes, so I slept quite a bit, right, Dr. Easton? <laughs> Not in your classes. <laughs> I really cared about all my friends. I've got a bunch of Lambda Kais in here. I really cared about all my friends, and uh, this isn't a class, so I like to have a little bit of fun. And then I decided to get a master's in engineering, honestly, because of Aggieville. <laughs> this is the important part, though. What about my passion and my purpose? What I said to myself is, I just need to get a job, and then I'll figure it out, right? It'll all come clear to me when I get out in the working world. I took a job with ExxonMobil. I showed up at day one to a familiar uh, rhythm, orientation, and training. They hand me a skill assessment. At least there were no more grades, but it seemed very similar. Then I had a performance evaluation, so basically like my resume. And I had a bunch of new friends, and I just had a little bit more in my pocket to have fun with. I was a freshman again. Right? I was in my second startup. And the cycle keeps repeating. <laughs> I've had four startups. I need to come up with better names. Uh, but I'm, I'm on my fifth one right now. And, and I actually am completing these activities alongside the students. And on a flight to Hong Kong, uh, my wife and I, she, uh, she has to deal with me through, through the Skill Accelerator. Um, but I was completing the first activity where you find the intersection of your interests and your skills, and then you come up with what are three potential versions of your, your future. And I couldn't get over this one component of that activity, and that was what was my difference factor going to be. It really bothered me. And I'm going to state the obvious. I'm white. I'm male. I'm able-bodied, I'm heterosexual, and I'll even rephrase that. I was raised in a pack of white, able-bodied men. And on the surface, the world doesn't view me as different. And I was cautioned not to say this, but that's exactly why I have to say it. And I talked about Megan beforehand, about how important this is, and we had a meeting earlier that we were talking about it, that we be open about this conversation. Because the most powerful component, and it has to be instilled at the core and center of this program, is that as a startup, you are successful by being different. And that's not an altruistic message. That is simply the truth. It is a business fact that if I have a table of five people, and if you don't have a different perspective than someone at that table, then you're not needed at the table. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was here a few weeks ago, and he said we have to be more open about this discussion, so I wanted to be a part of that. It's hard to say those things, but I wanted to be a part of that. Because the Skill Accelerator does way more than embrace our differences. It encourages them, and it really demands them. So when I landed on that flight in Hong Kong, the decision for me was clear. Lauren and I decided we were gonna take seven months off as a personal leave from work and go on a, live, or on a learning and giving journey in Asia. We, we're in search of our difference factor. And to, to really understand our difference factor, we thought we needed to understand the scope of 
the differences out there by immersing ourselves in other countries that have different cultures that can reset our lens through which we view the world. And our plan is to connect with a, an organization called Junior Achievement that uh, supports some of the causes that we already care passionately about uh, with education and women's empowerment in these communities. I think I was supposed to show that. <laughs> you can see 10 years into my career, the Skill Accelerator changed my life. And you, I think you understand why a graduating senior, this is as relevant as a freshman. But if you reflect on your life, you can probably actually see a series of career startups. It hits me more and more every single day. My dad retired in December and he's running his post-retirement career startup. It really is. President Myers, one of the most accomplished military figures, he's running a career startup as an education leader. Megan, like this story, she's, I mean, she has a, her, her iteration cycle of her career startups is like one year. I mean, she's got a lot of startups. But it's, it's amazing when we're talking to dinner about her career startup that she's about to embark on. There's no question in my mind that this program can change life after college and it can change higher education. But we can't get in front of ourselves because an imaginary engineer thinks really big, but you start really small. And that's why our inspiration for the program is the two Latin words, gratitim ferocitor, and if someone knows Latin, I probably pronounce that wrong, so I apologize. But it's step by step, ferociously. So my first step when I leave this room is that I'm gonna complete the program with the students and, and share the story with them and, and contribute. We also made this promise to students uh, that Dr. Kramer keeps reminding me of at the kickoff that we said, for every student that makes it through the program, we are going to guarantee that we're gonna get you a skill-rich opportunity this summer. So we have our work cut out, so we need to get the message out. So I'm gonna triple down on it today and say that for every person that reaches out to us that's interested in this program, that wants to help, I'm going to bring in $5 for every single person. And for every person that views this message, I'm gonna bring in a dollar. For the students, how many founders, can the founders stand up? Sorry to put you on the spot. The, the student founders stand up that are in the room here with the Skill Accelerator program. So you see founders around the room. Thank you guys. To all the other students that are here, if you, felt com if you feel compelled by this message, talk to those students, reach out to us if you would be excited about building this program. Because there's this concept in startups, when you get involved in the early stages, you are a founder. This group stood up and there's an opportunity for all of you. For faculty, can the K-State IE faculty that are here in industrial engineering stand up? Thank them so much for this effort and for all other faculty and administration that see this message, take them as an example because they have really embraced this idea that we can have a significant impact by starting with students, by starting to integrate these concepts into their class, by using the language, that's the powerful piece of this. And for all of the rest of the K-State community, so if you weren't in those first two buckets, then that means you. There's this concept in startups, and the parallel is amazing on this one, of an angel investor. And that's a person that goes and is willing to take a risk with no guarantee of return on the most vulnerable and early stage startups. You can be an angel investor as a K-State member of this community. So to close with a final startup parallel, there's this concept, it's this mythical bar that you try to achieve with a startup to be successful and it's represented by this symbol, 10X. 
And the idea is you need to be 10 times better than what's happening today or the status quo to be successful, to get out of the trenches of being a startup. And we fully believe that this program can deliver a 10 times better student experience with 10 times more interaction across our community and a 10 times better K-State. Thank you. Thanks, Bryce. And again, we'll have a short period of time for questions and answers. So we'll use the microphone again, so just go ahead and raise your hand, I'll come to you. So you talked about how uh, like a top 80% of combination of skills uh, completes you. Um, here in the program, it talks about you're part of SGA, SAB, and all university open house. Can you talk about how those experiences, being each of them unique, how you were able to like bridge them together to make yourself a more unique uh, IPO? In a sense? Yeah, yeah. I well, and and part of the reason for this program is I didn't do it as effectively as I feel like I could have. And there's so much. If I, I mean, you don't, you don't look at your path because you know there. You don't want to change one thing because I'm really proud of where I am. But there's certainly things I could have done more intentional. But if I look at the things I did accidentally to get my niche, I would say the first accidental thing I did was uh, agree to Dr. Easton to do research and then to be crazy enough to try to come up with my own idea to research. And I would say that was number one fundamental thing because then I went into the workforce into a sales engineering type of a role. And so that's very different. There weren't a lot of people that did a very theoretical research subject and then went into, uh, also then went into uh, sales and, and sales engineering. And actually I'll answer it too by some conversations I've had with students that are, are more intentional than me uh, already right here on campus. Alex walked me over here with SAB and she was talking about how she wants to be a trauma surgeon and she's getting a mechanical engineering degree. That's that unique combination of skills. So I think there's a, there's a lot of examples out there, but you want to find, it. I've more done it. What was your name, by the way? Raj. Ra Raj, yeah. I, I've more done it in my career than I've done it at K-State, where I take these two points that are inexplicably different and then try to find the connection between them, and it's made every job I've had better. And, and a good example is Megan. We were at dinner last night, and she was talking about her her idea, and so an application of being different is like, I'm, I'm raising my hand to be on Megan's board of advisors. Like if she wants any kind of help in terms of starting to start up. So that's the type of things, then that experience helps me with other experiences too. So I think it's saying yes, but not saying yes to too many things. So Bryce, I love how you've implemented this idea to the IE department. Um, how do you see this program growing? Do you see it just in the College of Engineering or is it campus-wide? And what does that look like in maybe more the soft sciences, arts, design majors? Yeah, and what was your name? I'm Maggie. Maggie, thank you, Maggie. Uh, we had that conversation earlier, didn't we, Megan, with uh, Dr. Dan Deneau. Um, I invite, invited an esteemed guest here, Dean Dawson, with the College of Engineering. So <laughs> that's, that's part of the plan to scale, but we think it's applicable across K-State. And uh, specifically, I'm excited about the integration with arts and sciences at some point, because that's where you really get your difference factor. I mean, we have a student in the program who's an industrial engineer who also is getting an anthropology degree. Talk about a combination that very few people will have, and that's the stuff that like, gets me extremely excited. One of the skills, so we've selected skills in the program that we're gonna focus on. One of mine is actually drawing. So I'm an engineer, and I'm gonna be focusing on drawing. So. Thanks, Maggie. I can just ask one, well, just so that people on the live stream. Okay. Yeah. 
Hey Bryce, uh, just from being involved in the Founders team, which has been a really great experience, what are some of your comments on these skill-rich opportunities that students can pursue when they're in their earlier years of college? Um, just with my involvement with Blue Key Senior Honorary, and we sponsor the Catalyst class, which has a lot of students here. Uh, it's professional and self-development class. Um, and then also talking, you know, what we've talked about with, you know, Dr. Hirestam and developing your identity in college and what some of those uh, opportunities are for those students. Yeah, that's awesome. So we were talking to Dr. Uh, Dan Danau, hopefully I said that right, um, and uh, he, we were talking about how there's certain student organizations where the membership is going down and where that's a challenge. And the comment I had was, I'm okay if the membership goes down as long as the output goes up. So the reason I say that is how can students do it is, is a skill-rich opportunity is something where you can advance in your responsibility over time. You need time and you need a responsibility change. And so my recommendation to any student is not a specific organization, but few organizations where you can have a significant impact and find that place where you think you can do it. A mistake I made was I did everything. Like, I did way too much. And if I could go back, I would do fewer things and do more. And when I, uh, I apply that now, when, when I volunteered to help with the advisory council and why I'm here today, I said to Dr. Kramer, if I do this, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to put away the other stuff because this is going to be my pillar that I go up. So I would say be focused and find something you, you're passionate about and that's different, right? Find something that can create that. Because by surrounding yourself, like with the difference factor, the thing I've learned most recently is like the, one of the ways is to do different things, to do interesting things, but to surround yourself with different people. That's a critical part of it. We've got time for one more question. Hello. Hi. Um, I wanted to know if you can maybe talk about the preparation that you and your wife are taking to take seven months off because, you know, as we talk about college and debt and job and, you know, this thing, it's just like, well, how does that happen? You know, like, what's, what are you doing to prepare yourself so that you can do that? And then when you enter back into, <laughs> you know, going back possibly to work, I don't know, but, you know, can you maybe talk a little bit about what that looks like as as a student, you're like, well, how could I do that? Yeah, that's awesome. And we didn't meet last night, but what's your? Jessica. Jessica, okay. Um, the first thing is marry someone that's way more responsible than you are. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's my first. Uh, response, but it's, it's a lot about, uh, I mean, you obviously have to be fiscally responsible to get to that point, but I would say the biggest thing in preparation, and Lauren could probably answer this better than me, but th actually this ties so much to the program, so, so I, I want to tie it to uh, asking for help. Like we've reached out to our network, and it's amazing, ExxonMobil as an example, how uh, supportive and helpful they have been for me in this. They've connected us to people in these countries. They connected us to junior achievement. So it's, it, it, we, we've had so many phone calls where it's like, come to Indonesia and you know, come to dinner with my family. That's the, that's the way that we're doing it so we can feel more comfortable. It, it's really about asking for help. So be fiscally responsible so you have the means to do it and then ask for a lot of help and then marry a, a person more responsible than you. <laughs> All right, so with that, that kind of concludes our program for the evening. So if you guys wouldn't mind joining me in thanking Megan and Bryce once more for their... <laughs> we really appreciate your visit back to campus and getting to learn from your stories. So thank you so much for your successes. And uh, as you head out, we are constantly trying to improve our programs. So there is a survey, um, which is at www.kstate.com slash DYA. So if you have a few minutes to fill that out as you leave, uh, that would be much appreciated. And have a great evening, and thank you for coming out again.